for my. Good morning. Coming up, Tara Overholt and News 2 o'clock. After 2, TakeMyTrip.com. We'll talk with a man who took a trip that you would never take because it would be like being in a horror movie every single night. Or at least the beginning scene of a horror movie. We'll meet this guy and find out why he does these things. This is News Talk 1290, CJBK. If you are in the mood for a journey of your own, maybe you're not going to walk from London to Glencoe, Maybe you're just looking for a trip to take. How do you think up what to do? You can, you can call a travel agent. That's a fantastic way to do it. Or you can certainly go to takemytrip.com. If you're looking for something maybe just a little different, a little in some times, in some cases, off the beaten path. Daniel Woodrum joins us right now from takemytrip.com. Daniel, how you doing? Hey, Mike. I'm great. You have taken some... Fairly wild trips, uh, the San Juan Skyway, uh, surf and volcanic turf trip, and a week in Utah, which also looks a little bit like a week out of the first scene of a horror movie day after day, if you look at the pictures. This is a perfect setting for a horror movie. Uh, what has made you decide to, uh, you know, shirk the sand and the sun and do things like this? Uh, well, yeah, you know, and, and it's important to note, I live in Florida, so I have plenty of sand and plenty of sun uh, right here and plenty of flat, which I think is why I really like to get away and get to some mountains and see something totally different and, um, you know, and just hit the road and uh, get out there and uh, spend time alone with my thoughts and, uh, and just see, uh, you know, some amazing places. A lot of people will do that. They'll come back with their memories. They'll come back with their photographs. You take this to a whole new level. Just to paint the picture of what TakeMyTrip.com is about, tell everybody what you do on that website. What I do is I, it, it's all in the title. It's all right there in the, in the website name. I, I go and do this, and then I lay it all out so that anybody can go and see, oh, you know what, it's, it's not that hard to take a sort of a do-it-yourself road trip you don't have to have someone organize it for you you can kind of wing it you can kind of get out there and have an adventure and you know have each stop along the way have have a nice path to follow and it's 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 not all that hard it's not all that scary let's talk about a week in utah because not all that scary is not exactly what we would describe we've looked at the pictures and I don't know whether – I'm trying to think of the, the actual movie. There's a movie where three kids are driving and These they reach – These hills have eyes. That's what – the hills have eyes. The hills have eyes. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> a lot of your pictures look like they could come from that movie, and things didn't go well for the people in the car in that movie. I'm not giving anything away as far as a spoiler to tell you about that. You were in what looked like a horror movie setting like the hills have eyes in almost every photograph that you took. What was a week in Utah – like uh you know what I, I utah is absolutely one of my favorite states because it is so it is bizarre the landscape is it's mind-blowing and unlike anything you've ever seen and it's so easy to just get out there and and lose yourself in the beauty of it and and just see something that that's so different from anywhere else and then you, you get away from people you're you're out there on your own and you can enjoy the quiet and uh, the desert and the mountains, um, and it's just it's an adventure every time. I've been there. Yeah, you mentioned one of the trips I've taken. Probably about at least a half dozen of my trips have somehow touched Utah because uh, it's just there's there's just so much that I still haven't done there that there's still less to do. We're talking with Daniel Woodrum from TakeMyTrip.com. He takes a trip and then he shows us how we can take that same trip because there are some wild photographs, wild things to do. Al. Uh, the, the one of the on, on your site that I, I fell in love with was the uh, trip along, I think it's called America's Loneliest Highway. What is that, Route 50? It's the, the loneliest road in America is uh, US 50, uh, which cuts right through the middle of Nevada. And, and so uh, I, I've always had this dream, and my, par my friends all make fun of me because I say I would go to Vegas and I would just want to rent a convertible and drive down the, the lonely roads that you always see in, in movies and everything like that. And you've got all of these crazy pictures uh, all the way through this, the loneliest highway in America or the loneliest road in America. And I, uh, number one, at times, it looked really, really hot. Would I even be able to use a convertible? But number two, for most of the time when we're doing a road trip, 
how do we get there? Do we drive our car there, then start the road trip, or do you rent a car when you're there? How does it work? Well, as I mentioned, uh, I'm in Florida, so uh, it's like a 500-mile drive for me to get anywhere that's worth going. Um, so I normally fly uh, to some destination and rent a car and then make a loop from there. That's uh, 90% of the time what has worked for me. And it, it, that's not too hard to do. If you're going, if you were wanting to do this loneliest road trip, you could fly into Las Vegas, you could fly into San Francisco, or uh, into um, uh, Reno, or even uh, Salt Lake City, and you would be, you know, just a few hours away from from this stretch of Route 50. We're talking right now with Daniel Woodrum from TakeMyTrip.com. On some of these trips that touch Utah, you mentioned there are very few people around. Are you ever concerned that something's going to go wrong and you're not going to be able to say, oh, hey, over here, my, my car's not working right now. Could I have some help? Uh, a time or two. Uh, I, I, a few times I've ended up on a road that I, after I'm on it, I realize this is not really a road for a small rental car two-wheel drive, to be on. <laughs> but for the most part, um, you know, someone's going to come by eventually. Uh, and I figure uh, it's, I just have to kind of put that fear aside. It's just a little fear that's there, and I just have to say, okay, you know what? I'm, this is this is going to be great, and I'm going to enjoy this, and if something happens, I'll handle it. But, uh, you know, there's always a solution. When you put the fear aside, does that make it easier to enjoy the natural beauty that you must see around you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I get out there, and I, I love photography, so I get out there and I start taking pictures, and what I'll find is, I forget to eat. I'll go the whole day, and I'll see it. If the, you know, the sun will go down. It'll be ten o'clock at night, and I'll go. Wait a minute. I, I haven't even stopped to eat a sandwich yet because I've just been so taken by everything that's that's around me. Okay. So obviously, when you're researching these trips, you know a little bit about the area that you're going to. What area maybe surprised you by way of either the beauty or just the experience you had? Oh my goodness. Um, it, it, there's, there were a few places that, um, I guess you could say they surprised me just, just because of the volume. I, I love to go to the state of Oregon, um, because not only does it have the coastline, which everybody knows about, which is beautiful, then you get into the interior of Oregon, uh, which, which touches on, uh, on Nevada, you know, it kind of, it, uh, the desert goes on up into there and you, you have these expansive areas of deserts and mountains and, um, it, it's, it's so not what you would expect when you get there. What's next for you? Uh, next, uh, in just a couple of days, I'm going to Alaska, actually. It'll be the first time I go up there. It'll be my, my 49th state uh, that I've been in, and it, and it is the 49th state, so it's appropriate. Hey, Daniel, we want to thank you for putting this together. If you haven't checked out the website, it's called TakeMyTrip.com, and good luck on your adventures on future trips. We really appreciate the time. Hey, I appreciate you having me. That is Daniel Woodrum, TakeMyTrip.com. He goes to some of the, the wildest things you wouldn't think of doing. The loneliest highway in America. Why? Because there's nobody on it. Nobody even lives there. But as he says, you put aside that little piece of fear and you actually start to enjoy yourself. I wouldn't be able to get over the fear. I, I, I would be fine with it. And, and some of the pictures are incredible. How like, would you be fine? Wait a minute. Oh, I would be How? so no, 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 no. Mike. Al, how would you be fine with the fact, and Daniel even said his attitude was, oh, someone else will come along, where you are in the middle of nowhere, right. on a highway where you're just looking around, you might see mountains off in the distance, <laughs> right. you see a lot of desert, you see a lot of rock. There isn't even water if no. you need some. You bring water in your car. But what if you run out? Maybe you, What if you're there for more than two so days? So here's what you do. Here's what you do. The, the, the car that you rent should be like a camper wagon. And he that didn't way, say that. No, he, he just didn't. rents a regular old car. That. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying that. So just make can you sure rent a camper wagon? I don't know. Actually, maybe we should. That would see. Look at this business venture you and I have just walked walked in on here. Hey, I've we gone should. along with a lot of good business adventures in the past, including making our own shirts. Yeah, but I don't think that this is one that I want to think in about. On. This. Think about this. It would be our job to drive up and down Nevada, trying to find people in danger. And then when they're really down and out, we ding them for as much money as they have to help them. That's called robbery. Not really. You're providing a service. They they just weren't expecting that service to be there. But my concern is 
that, and maybe I watch too much in the way of movies. Maybe, maybe I've seen too much. Maybe, maybe I'm not trusting of my fellow man enough. Okay. But if I'm broken down at the side of the road, right. I look at myself less like a guy who needs help and more like a target or victim. Mm-hmm. So that's why that's the service we would provide is we would come by and say, we don't want to rob you with a gun. We want you to monetarily repay us at an exorbitant amount for a service that would normally cost 50 bucks. And our families will come, too? At we'll times. turn our kids into pickpockets. It'll times. be great. No, at times. I think that we could really be onto something here. And, I mean, it's really ki- kind of nice. Like, uh, uh, this is, uh, this, I will admit that this is probably a bad example, but... You would go onto the hiking trails, and it's the, I think it's linked in with the hiking trails. Remember that guy that that got his arm pinched under a boulder, and he had to cut his arm off. And great and story. Yeah, it was bad fantastic. example. Bad example. But like, there's all of those really cool hiking trails. So every once in a while, you and I would be in radio contact, and you'd be back at the camper wagon, and I'd kind of go on there and say, "Hey, is anybody pinned down by a boulder?" And then if they said yes, then I, we, I would say, "How much money do you have?" Oh, well, I need 50 bucks more than that or something <laughs> along those lines. It's all about the upsell at that point. I'm back to making our own shirts. All right. I think it's better. It's 219.